All right. Good morning, guys. Um, I'm David, founder and CEO of Pranos. And uh, you guys may know me well as of now. I mean, we've been interacting the last few months and we appreciate everyone's support. Um, and I have my co-founder here, Alizé Allison, who will be um, joining us today. Alizé, you want to maybe do an introduction, maybe so they can kind of get to know you a little bit. Sure. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, again, my name is Alizé. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Pranos, the co-founder here, and really excited to share with you our update today and uh, looking forward to the launch. So, Awesome. Yeah, Alizé and I have been working together for quite a few years, you know, a few years now. So it's been, it's been a great ride. Um, all right, perfect. So the first thing we wanted to kind of show you guys and update you guys on is our new website. I want to go ahead and share my screen here and walk you guys through um, our site. Let's see here. All right. And later on in the, sorry for the background noise. I'm in a hotel lob lobby, so there's uh, some some noises here. So apologies. Um, all right, so the first thing we're going to walk you guys through is uh, our new e-commerce site that we uh, put together here. Um, as you guys can see, now we have, uh, it's a complete new setup. Um, kind of just talks about um, some features of the product, compatible with most vehicles, reaching audiences. And of course, the uh, highly anticipated mobile app that's actually uh, currently in final stages of production um, and development. Um, and now we'll actually touch on that here in a bit. So I wanted to kind of walk you guys through this, the car uh, compatibility guide, because that's something that we get a lot of questions from, is what cars is this system compatible with? Um, the way we actually designed this product from inception has been to be turnkey installation and be compatible with most car makes and models. Um, the basic requirement is uh, to have a window that's diagonal from 25 to 35 inches, um, at least the rear side, to support the four by three aspect ratio. Um, as well as the tent level has to be, it's optimal to be under 20%, um, I mean, higher than 20%. And then uh, of course the uh, mounting clips, which allows you to, uh, install the, the mount. So that's, uh, I mean, we'd love to hear you guys' feedback on this. This is what we kind of, I, I, I kind of thought this would be a good way to kind of check the boxes for the customer to be able to check the boxes and understand if um, it's something that's viable with their, to the, with their vehicle. So, um, and of course the whole wall, which is something that we have uh, in our pipeline. Um, and that's something that uh, basically it's similar to what we're doing with the with the whole glass for the cars, but the idea is to uh, install it on storefronts as well. Um, and Alize can probably touch on that. Would you like to kind of touch on that, Alize? Maybe introduce him to the idea behind the, the whole wall. Sure. Um, very briefly, because certainly you know our focus is on the launch of the whole glass, but you know we see this is a huge opportunity um, for Pranos uh, in terms of real estate. Uh, ultimately, the the move for hollow glass, it was strategic in that uh, the cars are in motion. Uh, it's a lot more disruptive. Uh, but when you look at the actual amount of area, uh, the physical space that we can uh, we can actually uh, use our platform on, it's 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 even larger than what we can do in the vehicle space. So um, certainly, uh, will be very very exciting um, once we launch that next product. Perfect. And then, of course, we have our uh, WeFunder link here in the bottom. So, um, show you guys something. Here. So our Holo Glass, our Prano's uh, Holo Glass uh, pre-order page is here as well. Um, we actually got some new e-commerce, uh, some new photography. Or for, uh, and like I said, apologies on the background noise <laughs> again. Sorry about that. Um, here is actually uh, some pictures of our uh, of our actual holo glass system. 
Alize, it's kind of loud back here. Do you want to kind of uh, run them through the deck, actually, for a second? Sure. Um, if you want to uh, pull up the deck, but to, to just walk through here, the, the pre-order slide here, uh, ultimately, as you can see, it's designed into the physical headrest, which makes installation very easy. Um, there is an adapter that plugs into any 12-volt auxiliary power or how you power it. And ultimately, the film that comes with the package is very easy to install, not dissimilar from a, a tent that you would have for your car. Um, some of us may be adept at doing that. Others may um, want to have it uh, installed uh, by someone who, who specializes in vehicles. If you're if you're if you're kind of like me, uh, who uh, aren't, aren't aren't as great uh, with things of that nature, but um, here is the view of the total package and what is contained uh, with your kit showing the the unit the film uh, as well as the clip and the clamp that goes um, with the headrest. And it looks like it got a little quieter here, but um, yeah, exactly. I was saying it's basically basically what's uh, actually contained in the package. Um, this is our package, new package design. Um, the whole idea is for the customer to be able to get this um, and install it themselves. Um, and this is one, this is a rear side window mount. And up here is the rear windshield mount. So you take off your rear uh, headrest, you put this on and you should be ready to go. Um, and here's some, uh, a sneak peek of our actual app. Um, some of the, the main screens of it um, allows you to connect uh, via Bluetooth to your system um, create your playlist and directly, um, basically any media that's on your library, you can uh, pull into the app and create a playlist. And you can uh, make some modifications to uh, the resolution, the aspect ratio, um, as most windows are, most windows are different uh, in size. So you're actually able to uh, basically retrofit the uh, the, the image to the, to the pro appropriate window size. So um, that's the sneak peek and it'll be available on the Google and the app store here, hopefully within a month. We're working on the final stages of the beta. The app is completely done. We're just kind of uh, make some, making some last minute tweaks and iterations. So, um, and like uh, maybe get, get into some real, some specs as well. Um, as you guys have seen in the video, um, our system, what's interesting about our system is that it looks just like it does in the in the videos. There's not a lot of rendering. I mean, this is a rendering, but when it comes to the videos of the actual display system, that's exactly where you're gonna get. And that's what's exciting about what we're doing is the, uh, you know, due to the projection, the nature of projection technology, you're getting 1080p, you know, and uh, high, high lumens. And um, that's, that's what's exciting and that's what's different. And that's why we picked this particular technology and build around this technology to to commercialize because it's 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 definitely something that is very uh it's just very agile i guess i'd say but um all right now let's get into um some just general updates before we get into some q a because i think we'd like to set some a good amount of time for that um let me just uh minimize this stuff here all right so as you guys could tell um i recently changed my last name i legally changed my last name uh but it was like two weeks ago so it was granted by the judge i got the name change order that's why i wanted to kind of address it because i you know i go by a different last name now um in the re in the so we funder knows about it i sent them the new id name change order and i'm just kind of going through the process of basically letting everybody know banks investors um, anyone else that, that they may need to know. Um, the reason, and I'll kind of touch on this, it's mostly to, uh, I've always wanted to change my last name. I, I love my last, I mean, I, my former last name was cool, but it was just too lengthy. No one could pronounce it. And I always felt like I wanted to kind of pick something that was a bit more marketable. And there's no better time to change it than before we, you know, hit the global stage, you know, so it's, it's really better to change it now before it really gets hectic here as we already kind of uh, starting to realize just from all the attention we're getting, it's, it's, it's gonna get pretty big. So 
um i don't know and it was mostly just for fun too so that's that's basically it <laughs> um great um so if you guys have any questions about that feel free to reach out um it's official on we funder i changed it on that we reached out to the sec um to to the secretary of state in delaware so everything is going to be changed uh um in, in the proper way so um looks like we have a question here in the chat to start uh, oh yes want to awesome. take your first question from jeff yeah. let's see here oh hey jeff um yeah and feel free to just go ahead and ask questions so Jeffrey's question is, will the whole wall require a specific film on the window? Also, with the cars, can you show you show rear window display? Is that still in development? Yeah. So as far as uh, well, Alize, do you want to kind of touch on whole wall, and then I'll, I'll touch on the on the whole glass portion of the question? Uh, yes, uh, indeed. So similar to the holo glass, the holo wall will also require um, a film. Uh, that would uh, be utilized in conjunction with the technology. So uh, that's a pretty straightforward question. And if you want to address. Yeah. Yeah. So, and just to add to that, so we're actually using um, a technology that allows for, for the window to be fully transparent and opaque, depending on um, how you toggle it. Um, and there's a little bit of a sneak peek on the, on our demo video and you can kind of see how that works. Um, basically it uses uh, nanophotonic te uh, technology to basically alternate from from both opaque to to transparency i think that's another that's uh, an aspect and of, of really strong aspect of what we're doing is it still allows for people to fully see see through the windows um and okay let's see here you show rear window displays that's in the moment yeah so the rear the rear windshield uh display so the beta is actually going to be comprised of the rear rear side window. The rear windshield uh, is still there's still some tweaks, and that's that's the that's the one that looks like a headrest. Um, we're still working on uh, on it a little bit when it comes to uh, how it actually captures how it captures the the entire windshield, um, just because of how close it is to the window. Um, and it depends on your car whether you have an SUV or a sedan. Um, it, it, but we're working on the on the throw ratio um so it can actually capture the entire window right now there's some issues with certain models that's why we haven't released it yet because we want to make sure that it's compatible with all the cars that we think it can be compatible with um hopefully that uh oh jeffrey let's just have you jump on um into our panel because you're our lead investor so i uh i'm gonna bring you on the panel if that's okay with you maybe it, um let's see here Jeffrey, can you hear us? There you go. All right, Jeffrey. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to turn your camera on, but if you know, since you're a lead investor and you're here, you might as well um, join the panel. Right. So, a question I have then, because I'm I'm very interested in the the wall, um, as well as the car items, <clears throat> also. But with the wall, are you pro are you projecting a um, um, ultra short throw? Um, projector or how would that how would that look for a large window yeah so for the large window so the projectors that we're actually using for the for the whole wall um like i said we've we've put some prototypes together for that um there's nothing commercial yet um it actually allows for uh storefronts that are uh, almost 12 feet in diagonal so as long as we have five feet of throw distance from the mount to the window um it'll do about 12 feet diagonal which covers most most storefronts um but it's a complete different system different projector different mount system um and like i said we've we've put prototypes together for it um but we don't have a solution that we can like the whole like the whole glass that we can just package and ship worldwide yet but that's a good question so the the pre-order for the that you showed originally that is for the side windows only is that correct exactly. yes. Is that for one unit or two units? So that's actually, so currently for the pre-order on the, and I'll just, I'll pull it up again so everyone can see. Um, and just to clarify here. Um, so this pre-order portal where, you know, we're actually taking a hundred dollar deposit as well. Um, that's only for this system here. 
Um, th so this is only limited for, for a certain amount of betas. And then we're, we're taking hundred dollar deposits for the, for both, but this is what's actually going to be shipped out uh, in the, in the early, just early before, before the other one, if that makes sense. Um, right. Hopefully that addresses your question. Um, th this is still, this is actually something that um, is ready to go, but we, we still, we got to do it. We got to also do a beta for this as well. So. Got it. So you're saying the, the camera is installed in the headrest already, or is that a separate add-on for other people who might be interested? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So this, so, so, how, so basically this, this projector is compatible. With, the same projector is actually compatible with the, the rear side and the rear um, and the windshield. So it actually comes off. So you can actually take this off. So it's really, this is the mount. That's that's the mount for the side. That's the mount for the rear windshield. And this actually twists off, and uh, and it's something you can you can kind of alternate. If that, was that your question? Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's something that you know it's compatible with both, and it's the same project uh, projector. It's just uh, different mount systems. Um, right. And this mount won't be available uh, till probably after we actually. Uh, fully release this one this is like this this is basically our first product um this is our close second that's it i guess when you saw that picture for me if other people might have the same question is that i i assume that maybe that camera was mounted in the headrest and it swiveled out but it looks like the attachments is to attached the bar of the existing um headrest for facing the rear seat that but swivels out towards the window is that is that an accurate assessment of what you're what you're what you're providing yeah so so let me um well i don't know if i have an image here um let's see if i uh, you guys can still see my screen right um yeah pull cool this i think i might have an image that can clarify this question on the deck maybe not um i was like you know we have an image on the deck no so yes, yeah, so basically, um, basically the projector is going to be facing the window, so it, it doesn't swivel. It, I'm just trying to understand your question. So, what do you mean by swivel? Well, my question was originally what what I thought might be the case is that headrest would have the camera built in, would face the rear view mirror, but could also be swiveled out to face the 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 oh. side window. But it I, looks like that those are two separate um, oh, configurations. No. Yeah, so they're they're basically not mutually exclusive, both of them, right? So the the rear the rear is only for the rear windshield, and the and the and the side mount is only for the rear side. So got it. Yeah, um, but that is a really good question. I wish maybe in the future we can design something that <laughs> works for everything, right? I think that would be yeah. that's what we're hopefully gonna head to. Um, it's just you know right now we're just trying to keep it simple and turnkey and cost effective for customers. Um, but no, I'm glad you joined, uh, Jeff, and I. I also wanted the Pronos community to kind of get to know you a bit. Um, would you like to maybe, you know, maybe introduce yourself um, real quick? Maybe take, take a few moments. Sure. Yeah, I don't mind. So I live in uh, the Salt Lake City, Utah area. Been here for about 28 years. Um, my interest has been investing in small startups probably for the last five or six years um, and found Pranos. And I thought this looks interesting. For some of my business um, um, applications, I thought that might be something I'd be interested in. So um, my wife and I jumped into that. Um, by trade, I'm a physician for the last 30 years, um, invested in a lot of diverse different things. And um, our most recent project is my wife and I opened up a medical spa in Utah as well. So that's our big project right now, but certainly interested in a lot of different um, revenue streams and diversifying and that's how we came on board with Pranos. That's awesome. That's awesome. And do you kind of um so it seems like you're also an entrepreneur as well, right? And uh right. I want to kind of share what you uh wanted to do at your your gallery and in, in your your particular right. so our our um uh medical spa is called the gallery of aesthetics and how we differentiate is I've invested a lot in art from around the world 
and we put that on display versus just the typical posters of beautiful women, you know, getting injected with Botox or having laser hair removal. Um, and we sponsor local artists to show, have an art show for them and, and help them get some exposure. But another um, venue I want is to have a projection system on one of our larger um, walls, or not walls, but windows, um, showing um, art that's in motion, which is usually just very abstract, but um, um, visual artists have created images that aren't static, like a painting, but are in motion and fluid. Um, so they capture some interest. And as people would drive by or eat at one of the restaurants nearby, they could take note of our spot and be interested to, to come see us. So it's a kind of a dual purpose, projecting art, keeping with the art theme, and then I'm using a, a vehicle like the wall to um, provide that kind of imagery. Yeah, and, we, and you know, you'll be the first one to get it when, when it's ready for sure. <laughs> Very good, awesome. Yeah, Alize, do you, do you wanna kinda maybe touch on, on, on some of the things we've done with Whole Little Wall or what conversation we've had around that? I mean, I think Jeffrey might find that interesting and maybe even a, a little bit about your background when it comes to, uh, to how relevant it is to what we're doing now. Sure. Well, Jeffrey, I, that's a wonderful use. And I'm always so fascinated when I hear people come up with creative ideas for our technology. And um, there's a reason why we wanted to empower everyone and allow you guys to, to, to use it the way you like, because you're going to come up with things that are just amazing and cool. You know, some of the things that we've talked about using this for um, are in traditional office settings where you may want to um, have it in the conference room um, to be able to, again, uh, market to clients that may be coming by or others that may be visiting your office. Um, we've, we've talked to retailers about converting their storefronts into, um, you know, kind of point of sale, digital point of sale screens, if you will, to either A, you know, let them see data on availability and ultimately um, perhaps even designing in touch features uh, to where it would be COVID friendly. You wouldn't have to actually go into the store you could order in a storefront and packages could be brought out to your doorstep. And I think the, um, you know, the uses go on and on and on. Uh, and hopefully uh, one day, uh, if we do what we're supposed to, you know, you'll see a promise advertising on the side of the Freedom Tower in New York City. So uh, I think a Coke bottle would fit very nicely there. Uh, that being said, you know, my, my background, since you asked me to just opine on that for a moment, is uh, in uh, commercial real estate. So I'm a uh, I consider myself a reformed investment banker and, and real estate developer. I don't promote that too much in the Bay Area. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I, I, I did have a penchant for building shopping malls and large scale mixed use development projects. And so ultimately I see this as the advancement of um, you know, my vocation, uh, if you will, uh, and the merge of technology and real estate to lead what I think is gonna be a hybrid model going forward for the future where real estate would be valued, not only by the value of the leasehold interest, but actually um, be able to create value above and beyond that. So that's where I see all the walls going and uh, excited to share with you guys. And to that point, Elisa, is that I looked into that kind of technology already through other vendors um, and they were outrageously expensive to, to create that kind of, um, interaction with with um, customers or clients or patients so it's pretty exciting to see potentially a very simple model that can allow other um, entrepreneurs to participate in that kind of um, um, product in order to promote themselves so agree and you hit on a very important point there which is our product positioning uh, in the market and we have fought tirelessly to get the pricing down uh, the best that we could, because we want this something to be uh, affordable uh, to, to people to use uh, so that we can um, you know, get as much coverage um, and, 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 and get it out to as many people as we possibly can. So ultimately that price point will come down some as we're able to deliver units and manufacture more units. I know there's a, a question in the chat uh, whether or not you'd have to buy three units in order to get uh, three screens coverage. And yes, that is the way that uh, it is set up, you would need three uh, different units. But as we grow this platform and our expectations are, uh, if we keep up the pace that we're currently setting, uh, that the, the, the price over the long term would, would, would come down. 
um, you know, as we're able to, to grow and get better uh, output from our manufacturing pricing. Yes, as well put. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's time you guys can start um, asking some questions. If I mean, we, we're starting to see some questions come in here. Um, but yeah, feel free to start um, asking questions and we can, uh, if we, we'll, we'll be happy to answer any, any open questions. Um, another thing we wanted to add is we, we extended the campaign from, um, originally we're gonna, we we're, we're gonna have a first rolling close uh, January 14th, but we decided to extend it. And now we're, we're gonna have our second rolling close on the 28th of this month. Um, we fund there has been really flexible with us and allowed us to really extend and, and just work, work, working around, really working with us. Um, and uh, so we are gonna stick through to the 28th, um, but we were planning on probably having a rolling close, but then keeping the WeFunder campaign open, um, probably, I wouldn't say indefinitely, but probably till we reach maybe 250K or, you know, um, and, you know, while we're, you know, we're still talking to VCs every other week, you know, we have another call with uh, Nava Ventures uh, here next week and, uh, um, but till we till we close our price round, I think it makes sense to just keep the WeFunder open, um, unless we you know we 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 max out, which we haven't yet. So we 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 hit our minimum goal, which is 50k is the minimum, um, which is great. Um, and the max for this particular valuation is 650. So you know we can technically keep it open, and that's what we uh, decided to do. So just to let you guys know, um, great. So we have this uh, question here the from the chat um let me let me just try and go through these here does the back windshield also work in pickup trucks are there limitations for certain vehicles all right that's a good question carl um so i guess the short answer is as no it's not it's not compatible with pickup trucks unless you have a long bed um, or a long, you know, a larger cabin, uh, which allows for the throw distance. The biggest thing about our projection system is you need at least two to three feet of throw distance from the, the projector to the window. So if you have a, a car that's, that only has a throw distance of, you know, a few inches to your window, right? Like certain trucks that have, you know, just two seats, um, that's not, or, or, or cars that are two seats, right? Like coupes, it just won't work um, for the current setup that we have. Um, so uh, really the best way to look at what we're doing is, and can you guys still see my screen? Alizé, can you see no, my screen? No, no, Just no Oh, okay, hold on. Um, well, I mean, maybe it's, you guys already seen it, but the best way to think about this is, um, you need the, you need the certain, you need that two to three feet of throw distance. So this mount which sits in the back back seat needs, you know, uh, yeah, it needs about two to three feet. It's actually 2.5 feet, but we, we figured out a way to uh, offset that and uh, with our digital zoom um, through our app. Um, so it, it, it does work with, um, you just got to keep that in mind. I guess that's the simple, simple way of addressing it. And same with this one. Um, um, so good question. Hopefully that addressed it. Um, Hold on, let me go back to the new website looks great. Regarding installation, is the consumer actually switching out their headrest with another or installing unit within their own vehicle headrest? Okay, thank you, uh, Rory Wells. Um, yeah, so the way it's set up is you actually take, mo if your car allows you to take your headrest off, um, there's some certain cars that that won't like uh we're working with this one customer who has a lamborghini uh suv and uh his headrest just wouldn't come off so it just would be too it would be a very invasive installation <laughs> to to try to try to get that headrest off but for most cars you can just pop the headrest off and put our headrest on um and and, and yeah so that's that's basically how it works um and that's what we built so um thanks uh, rory for that question Let's get to the next one. And uh, Jeff, do you, have any, do you have any other questions while I kind of go through these? Or are you still with us, Jeff? I think you're on mute, but. 
Yeah, I think he's on mute. Maybe not. Um, hold on. Sorry, I'm trying to. Uh, this is, this is actually our first webinar, so that's why it seems like we're all got to scramble because I use Zoom a lot, but I've never used this new uh, webinar interface. It's uh, it's interesting. There's a lot of different features here. Um, okay. Okay, so we have a question talking about our patents here. Um, so it looks like uh, Jonathan's asking us about um, our patents and can they be enforced? Yeah, so we actually, early on in our first year, actually, we uh, partnered up with one of the top uh, IP, IP uh, firms in Silicon Valley. And uh, they were just, it's interesting that they <laughs> kind of worked with us right away, even though you know we were still kind of, it was just very, very early on and we still barely had a product, but um, we now have, our, our patent portfolio consists of six patents. Um, which comprises of utility, business method, and design patents. Um, there's three that are patent pending, and there's two that we filed with the International P uh, PCT Authority in Korea, um, which is basically just, I mean, Korea, it, it, basically the, the Korean PCT uh, Authority is the overseeing body for international PCT patents, and uh, um, we filed it with them. And uh, so it should give us some coverage internationally if we, if need be, and if we get into some sort of uh, litigation or, or, or to a point where we need to enforce our patents in any way. But, um, and uh, we don't have any, any full, full um, non-provisional uh, non patents that are fully, uh, I believe, yeah, we don't, we don't, um, that are granted yet. So that's, that's where we're at. Um, we're working on on getting the, uh, I, I guess the international ones were a lot easier to, to get granted than the non-provisional ones. Sometimes those take a lot longer for the USPTO to kind of review. Um, but yeah, long story short, um, it's we definitely have enough material um, that makes us the first movers when it comes to this the system and really commercializing uh, a personal billboard. In essence, that's what we're doing. We're we're basically making a billboard uh, consumer friendly, right, and commercial, and anyone can just own their own billboard and either promote their own agenda or promote uh, corporate ads, right? So I think it's really it's really interesting uh, that that our and our patent kind of comprises. It really talks about a lot of those things and those aspects. Um, but yeah, if you, if if you guys ever have more questions about that, happy to to answer them. Alize, we got a question here that I want you to answer. <laughs> if you're still there, Alize. Yes. All right. What are you guys' financial forecasts for the next three to five years? Do you guys have an exit strategy? Yeah, well, that's, that's certainly a great question. And I think as many will say in technology, um, three to five years is a really, really long time um, in, in tech. Uh, and uh, I'd like to break it into smaller pieces. Uh, certainly, if you take a look at what we've done since we announced our pre-order site and the, the, the rate at which we're generating new customers and revenue, um, you know, within our first you know, two months, um, you know, we were approaching a million dollars um, and uh, you know, essentially uh, pre-order sales once those units would be would be delivered uh, so if we're looking at um, a similar run rate that we would put out for year one you know i think we would be in position um you know to see to see 10 plus or a million or so in revenue um assuming that we could we deliver those units in year one so um you know where where we look to be in three to five years i think that's a function of capital uh, and our access to that, uh, as you know, startups, it's uh, the, the riskiest uh, asset class to, to, to lend to. So, you know, this is why we're here and we're, we're raising an equity round uh, ultimately, and we'll be able to deliver our first units. I am certain that once we hit the market um, and our units actually start to um, get out into the world, uh, that 
it's, it's really going to accelerate that rate beyond what we've been doing here now, um, as we've spent um, very little uh, in terms of marketing dollars. Uh, uh, I think we're only doing one or two test markets uh, in California in terms of actually marketing, and we've been able to generate hundreds of customer sales in that regard. So, um, you know, short answer is, um, you know, we're going to be worth a lot more than what the valuation cap is uh, at, at, at WeFunder. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there is certainly a potential for future round uh, uh, of capital, uh, uh, future equity rounds. Um, uh, how, however, uh, I think uh, going public or, or any uh, talks of or natures of that as an extra strategy are still um, very premature. Awesome. Um, got another question here from Smithy. Smithy, I believe. So hopefully I pronounced that right. <laughs> Um, what are, what are some of the applications that you guys have, have seen customers use it for? Um, and what is the appeal to the consumer? Alizé, you want to take that one? I think that's, that's a good question. For that. It's a very interesting answer. But yeah, Alizé, I think you should take this one. You're on mute. You're on mute. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, I don't, I don't see that question there on, in the, in the chat here. Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah. It's on the attendee thing. Um, he's asking, what are some of the use cases, basically, that customer, the consumers, what is the consumer appeal? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, there's, there's so many different use cases. I think you have uh, use cases where people want to get a message out. Uh, ultimately, if you're an artist or uh, someone who creates content, um, pushing that content out is uh, one way. Uh, folks who are, um, uh, you know, have uh, a message that they want to deliver, whether it's uh, political uh, in nature or uh, protesting. Uh, right now, I think the most common way to um, express ourselves in protest is by holding up handwritten signs. Right. Ultimately, I think the, um, there's uses there. Others want to use it strictly for ornamental purposes for their car. We had folks say that um, they would really just want to put kind of cool fire and flames on on their Panamera uh, and others who are entrepreneurs uh, that sell retail goods such as flowers that would, you know, use it as part of a car wrap to, to host their flowers and uh, the things that uh, they would be selling on, on a retail level basis. Obviously, I think our technology is great for parked car situations where you could put QR codes, um, which everyone is very, very adept at using nowadays to take you to the various websites and pages to help support e-commerce platforms um, and uh, there's just really we could go on and on and on about the different uses we're, we're looking at actually um, using our technology to help support fundraising for a charity uh, who's having an event at uh, one of the arenas uh, here in in Philadelphia so um, they would be advertising um, and raising money for the foundation um, as part of uh, and, you know, one of the games um, during a halftime celebration. So just, um, you know, just lots of cool ways and, and cool things that um, you, could, you could do with the technology. Yeah, thanks, Alize. Um And we got another call uh, question here from, uh, looks like we got a question from Dwayne Del Sovia. Hi, Dwayne. Um, I imagine a primary use is in parked vehicle. Any protection against someone smashing a window to take the unit? I'll take that one. That's a good question. Though. <laughs> so one of the one of the ways to look at what we're building, and it's is, is similar to to a laptop or a phone in the way that you shouldn't just keep your valuables in your car, right? Um, and and that's why uh, the mount system is used. Uh, it's just is um, built so you can just clip it off when when you when you get home. Um, so we don't recommend people leaving it in their car. We've actually, we've, we've done some case studies and we've, you know, we've done some betas in the past where um, people have uh, dealt with issues with, with that. I'll just leave it there. So you don't want people to smash in your car. I've gotten my car, my window smashed before and people have stole <laughs> my prototype before it's happened. Um, so don't leave it in your car, um, you know, the same way you wouldn't want to leave your laptop or your purse or anything in your car, right? Um, no valuables. Um, and when it comes to the actual use case, yeah, I mean, we, you know, when it comes to, to running video, I would recommend, uh, of course, running it when you're in a parked uh, location, when you're actually parked. 
Um, but what's what's disruptive, what we're doing is we are allowing the consumer to, you know, we, we don't recommend consumers to play certain content. We, we don't recommend consumers to, of course, play content when they are uh, on the highway, but, um, you know, we don't endorse it, but there's currently no regulation against that. Um, we, one of our, our advisors is actually former director of the NHTSA, which is the National Tra uh, Traffic uh, Safety Administration, um, regulates traffic safety, cars, o all the OEMs. And he actually loves what we're doing. Um, he personally has said that he actually was the one that made, made the laws for autonomous vehicles back like 10 years ago. And uh, we were thinking about bringing, he actually wants to join our executive team once we're big enough. So we, we don't have the the payroll capacity just yet for that but uh but you know strategically we we and when it comes to regulatory compliance we have put a lot of thought into to making sure we're in compliance and that we we really uh create a safe atmosphere for other drivers on the road but at the same time giving people the freedom to express themselves in a new mode so um but yeah i don't want to ramble too much i could talk about pranos about this literally all day long <laughs> but yeah thanks Dwayne. that was a great question um i got another question here uh, Alize, if you want to take this one, um, this is from Sarah. Um, she's wondering how, how are you guys thinking about distribu uh, distribution and selling of the product? Have you guys thought about any partnerships? Oh, Sarah, that's a great question, and we're going to have a multi-pronged approach to sales. Uh, as we look to build our presence online with our e-commerce site, we are going to supplement that with a direct sales force. Um, ultimately, um, we will just like uh, most companies uh, that have a, a, a national product, kind of break it into regions uh, and look to do some direct sales to specifically car dealerships. Um, we see as a great outlet for strategic partnerships, as well as um, the accessory dealers who, um, you know, pimp your car out, add stereo systems, other equipment, things of that nature. Uh, there are certainly opportunities um, we see for us to partner perhaps with strategic retailers, um, whether that's the Geek Squad of the Best Buy or the like, but, but certainly uh, those that are the automakers, um, car dealerships, uh, and the other accessory after market um, uh, manufacturers are strategically where we will want to target with a direct forced effort. Um, much of our effort is since we are a consumer product, it's going to be online driven in terms of our online strategy and how we want to try and bring people to our website and um, and directly to to our company. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much how we're we're looking to grow um, strategically here. Awesome, thanks, Alize. Um, and just just to add to that, and just kind of give you guys a bit more context of the conversations we're having. Um, with a lot of OEMs. I mean, we've talked to basically most of the automotive manufacturers already in the last few years. Um, GM, Ford, Hyundai, Honda, Toyota. We've talked to um, Volkswagen as well. Um, so, and they all want to, they're all interested, right? All their labs and all the R&D groups are interested in what we're doing. They're aware of what we're doing. Um, the problem is, sorry, there's almost, I'm in a hotel lab, someone's backing me. <laughs> um, Alizé, you want to kind of just yeah. kind of take that so, from here, maybe yeah. tell them about what we've talked, the conversations with that. Yeah, certainly. And 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 so we, we've had a, a number of conversations with most of the major retailers and or, or manufacturers, excuse me. And, and what it really comes down to is those processes are very, very long lead time processes for us to get our, you know, technology, you know, incorporated into the manufacturing line. Is, is a longer scope project um, than uh, it may seem initially. And I think certainly we're, um, uh, we're in hopes that as we develop our technology, we will be able to integrate that into, you know, an assembly line process um, for, for, for many different cars and, and, and manufacturers. However, the, um, you know, that's a, that's, that isn't something that, that happens in, in, in a year's time, um, but we're, we're, we're on there radar we've um uh, we're, we're yeah. certainly of interest i think uh in terms of what what they see uh as a future uh, perhaps uh you know there's a, a an article um and a, a, a 
I believe a whole re release that was done by one of the, the big, big automakers here in the United States that uh, kind of showed, um, you know, kind of our technology and the interaction that our vehicles and technology have with the environment as really being where they see the future of, 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 of cars developing. So we, we, we see our technology as being perfectly aligned with that. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm in a hotel lobby and I didn't realize it was gonna be this noisy. So, um, but yeah, and just to add to that, um, I think it's really important to note is that, you know, and I got this from a Honda executive we talked to, um, you know, they're very, you know, they're very interested in investing and everything else, but because a lot of times they invest in companies that they can see vertically integrate into the, their assembly line. Um, and the reason that they haven't been able to integrate something like this into their cars is just the regulatory undertaking we're going to take, right? And, and when, when ushering a product like this, there's going to be, it's controversial in a lot of areas, right? From the content to implications they may have to the drivers to what it's going to do to advertising industry and et cetera. But what, what's interesting about how we're positioned is we're an aftermarket add-on. So it's harder to regulate an aftermarket component um then 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 if honda decided to put these on their cars they can't i mean yeah they could probably you know they have enough money to build whatever they like but um the nhtsa would would have a heart they just wouldn't be able to to kind of you know kind of they wouldn't be able to pull it off really because of the nhtsa and uh the nhtsa um really can't regulate an aftermarket component like ours especially since we've built it turnkey and we're not doing the installation. So there's a lot of loophole, well, not loopholes, but there's a lot of nuances when it comes to how we position the product. And, uh, and it's harder to regulate just because of that, because it's a consumer product. And uh, at the end of the day, the user will sign uh, terms and conditions, and we're going to make sure the user is educated and uses the best practices. But at the end of the day, um, the user at the user level, you have more freedom um, to modify your car than a car manufacturer, I guess, long story short. Um, so it looks like we're running out of time here, guys, but uh, I, I really have been, Jeffrey, um, do, you, do you have any maybe questions or final thoughts before we wrap it up? I, I don't, I just say, um, let's get going. <laughs> That's that the road. And we really appreciate your support, Jeff. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I believe, I mean, we have some questions we didn't really get to answer, but um, we, we have a hard stop here. So um, we will answer those via email. I have noted, noted them down. And uh, yeah, so, so we, we're just trying to do one final, final push on our WeFunder campaign. And if you guys have any questions in the interim, feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, we're happy you guys joined us and uh, hope you guys have a great week. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See ya. Bye-bye.